Today, I saw a scam, is what I'd call it. It may be borderline illegal. Uh, I don't know. It's probably definitely illegal in some countries, possibly even some U.S. states. And it's being done by a company called TeamViewer. TeamViewer is possibly the most used, widely known remote software in existence. Now, uh, there's been other bad press about team viewer i remember uh the, the aggressive sales team attacking like linus tech tips that was pretty hilarious seeing him just go over it he bought like a lifetime license they didn't honor that anymore and as of i think the 2021 they completely sunset all lifetime licenses and forced people into a subscription model that's not what this is about. It's not even about the aggressive sales either, which uh, I get is a bit pushy and, and definitely they will not leave you alone after you talk to them. So don't ever reach out inquiring about a license from them. This is about something way worse. I actually had a client site that I had a team viewer license on. And the reason why they had it was just from COVID and some other remote things. We just needed something quick. And of course, it being the number one remote software widely used in the world, it was the first thing that popped into mind, and that's why they went with it. So I get it. So don't feel bad if you end up using TeamViewer or you're currently using it. But what shocked me was what happened this past week. And I was like, what are you doing? This is crazy. So we need to talk about their subscription and even more so canceling their subscription and how it's hard for you to do it because this blew my mind i was like this is worthy of a video in itself and also talking about some alternatives at the end if you are one of the victims of actually being a user of team viewer and you want to get out follow the steps in this video we're going to go into some phone calls where we talk to an actual team viewer representative and cancel a membership but Wow, I've never seen this many hoops, and I've never seen anything quite this blatant and uh, anti-consumer. So let's get into it. So first off, when it comes to canceling a subscription in any pretty much tech company out there, any other remote software, anywhere else, you usually subscribe somewhere, and then you just have a cancel button when you log into your account, and you cancel the membership. Team viewers no different. I even asked the representative, and here's a little snippet of that recording, about this. Didn't you guys used to have like a cancel button on your website? I swear I canceled my subscription there before. Yeah, we have. Uh, do you know when your subscription is going to be renewed? Yeah, it's supposed to be next month. I don't misremember them actually having a cancel button in their thing. The representative even said, oh yeah, I think that was there. I remember that. And I was like, okay, I remember it too. I was just wondering if I was going crazy. This company went out of their way to remove your ability to cancel through a web GUI and you have to do a support ticket. This comes the next hurdle in canceling team viewer subscription is you have to submit a support ticket. It's It almost reminds me of AOL, if anybody from the 90s remembers how aggressive AOL was, or possibly you've signed up for a gym and you try to cancel, and they're like, we need a written letter sent to our corporate office for you to cancel. This is definitely along those lines of anti-consumer. And definitely, I think some, some states and some countries have made this illegal, as it should be illegal. So having said that, looking at the actual forum post, I made a ticket system and I was like, okay, well, it's getting close. Let me just try to reach out to live chat. Live chat's pretty easy on most products and this would be a pretty easy, I can just leave it up in the background, come back to it, cancel that way, right? Well, they didn't cancel anything through live chat, but they did send me this. This is crazy. So not only do they make it hard for you to cancel, but if you don't cancel within 28 days of the subscription re renewal, you will be charged another year. And here is another snippet from the phone call where I even kind of worked this in and asked the representative about this. Now, I did when I trying to do the chat thing just so I could, you know, cancel these a little easier next time in the future. Uh, it did say I had to do it 28 days before the cancellation. Otherwise, it gets renewed. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the team viewer policy say any cancellation or downgrade need to be submitted 20 days before they renew. And if I don't have... make it in that time period, would you just rebuild me for another year? Yes. That's bonkers to me. So there's not like they're, they have like 
overhead costs and all this other stuff worked into your subscription model, it's not any sweat to just delete something or delete an entity from a SQL database wherever your membership is stored. It's just inexcusable in the IT realm to be charging this type of you know upfront fee and forcing a person to buy an entire year of a service because they didn't contact you more than a month before the cancel date. So that is also pretty wild. Not only that, you can't cancel through live chat. So I was like, okay, well, I will do it through the ticket system. And it took some running around their website to find this. I, I made a how-to article. If you do need to cancel, you can submit a ticket through this system, which is whoa, rough to say the least. I wanted to see how long it did, and I gave it two or three days, but I was starting to come up on the 28 days because this is for a client after all, and I didn't want to make sure they didn't get charged for another year. So I waited a couple days, the ticket never got to, and I called in to TeamViewer, and I kind of want to share some of that experience right now as it took about a 10-minute call, which isn't too bad, so at least they have support agents, but uh, the actual you know back and forth, I was like, whoa. This is kind of nuts that this is where I have to go to. I did ask the representative specifically about this. What happens if I submit a support ticket like 31 days before the 28 day cutoff? He said the timer starts as soon as you submit the ticket. So even if they don't respond for a week, which he kind of quoted, I was like, hey, what's the average time in this call? And he said this. How long does it take you guys to usually do your tickets? Normally, between seven days, okay. because we have a lot of tickets. Sometimes it's 11, seven, between seven and 10 days. We seven and 10 days, okay. Seven to 10 days on uh, a support ticket is not great, obviously. It's pretty bad. But since that's where everyone's canceling, I could see how it's backed up. And he did say if you did get it in before the 28 days, you'd still be safe. So that's actually something that I, I don't want to say good job for not being a complete scumbag of a company, but you're kind of a scumbag of a company even making people do this there's and also the employee i felt bad for on the phone it's not like a knock against this person i'm talking to because it's not like he's making the decisions so i didn't want to you know be mad at him it's just kind of insane that either adding this huge amount of support these support calls support tickets when it could just be a cancel button at the end of the day but needless to say he did work through it and I did give him my ticket number to get canceled, but it, it would have taken seven to 10 days before I got an automated or an actual human looking at that ticket to get it canceled and, and getting this full membership canceled. This is a pretty egregious uh, way of canceling a membership. I thought this was kind of nuts that they went to these great lengths to keep people charged. And, and frankly, for this business, they probably would have just kept paying for it if I just didn't see it pop up on my card. And that was the thing that was kind of bonkers to me on a team viewer. And I want to now talk about some alternatives because there's so many out there. And uh, I've also made a tweet about it and got a lot of great responses. So here's some ones I've used in the past. I've used Parsec. It's actually a game streaming, but it's like really good for remoting in. So if you're a residential user, by all means, Parsec is actually a pretty good product. Uh, and I think it's also free to use. I do th think they have a premium tier, but that's more for like game streaming and some latency improvements. Uh, for the most part, the free tier takes care of you just fine. AnyDesk was another good recommendation. I've used them in the past, haven't had any issues with them as of yet. If you want a FOSS solution to where you want to host everything your own and take care of it all end to end, by all means, I highly recommend, uh, I think it was Rust Desk. I'm going to do a video on setting all that up so you don't have any overhead costs other than if you already have the infrastructure for, let's say, a big company and you want to bring it all in-house, which I would recommend if you're in like an enterprise type solution. Uh, I think that would be much better than relying on some company. And then if you do want a company or you let's say you're a one-man show at a business somewhere and you don't want to be managing all this, uh, I probably would recommend like uh, something like Splashtop. I've used them in the past. Uh, I don't haven't used them lately, so I'm kind of hesitant for a lot of these big companies. But I wanted to just say, hey, these are these four. There's more out there. Check the comments. If you know of another one, definitely leave your recommendation down in the comments. I'm really curious to see what other people are using. But I want to tell people... Get as far away from team viewers possible. I'm going to start making a lot more recommendations for any other product than this one. 
uh, because Team Viewer reminds me of the old Log Me In. A lot of people don't remember. Team Viewer got all this because Log Me In forced all their free tier into a paid tier, and people were like, okay, I don't want to pay you money, Log Me In. And then they went to Team Viewer. And to see Team Viewer kind of fall into these same really nasty, uh, grimy business practices kind of just disappoints me because at one time I did recommend them. And uh, that time has passed. So with that, I'll see you in the next video and stay the hell away from TeamViewer.